LA is a sunny place for shady people. Hello internet, it is Steph. So as you all can probably tell by the change of scenery and the title of this video, um, I moved. And I'm really excited to share that with you guys. It's why I've been so busy and so MIA and I'm so excited to show you guys all the videos that I already have made and recorded, so it's a ton of them that I have coming out. A lot of you have been asking why. Why did I choose to leave LA? Why is my hair doing this? So now that I'm here and almost settled in my new home, there's a lot of boxes still. I thought I would tell you since you all have been asking. So let's go back three years ago when I first moved to LA. When I graduated college, I was really debating between going to grad school somewhere on the East Coast or moving to Los Angeles to pursue the YouTube thing. All YouTubers were going to LA because it was told if you want to be a successful YouTuber, you have to live in LA. So like many YouTubers, I made the move. And I had visited LA a few times and stayed there for extended periods of time and I really loved it. So I thought I would love living there too, right? It has to be the same thing. Wrong, so wrong. Now this is all just my opinion and this was what LA was like to me and why I feel like it's not a good fit for me. Am I saying that it's a terrible place and that every single person who lives there is awful? No, this is just my experience. LA is a great place. It has the beach and great weather and hiking and it's a city with things to do and there's a bunch of different areas in the city that are all very different. It has a lot of great things about it. So before I was looking into moving, I was on the phone with one of my old professors who's like a mentor to me who I'm still in contact with and I was telling her how frustrated I was because I just, I never felt home in LA. I was living there for three years, but I never felt like it was home. And she brought to my attention, Stephanie, you've been telling me that LA doesn't feel like home since you moved there three years ago. And she was right, it just honestly never has. LA is very different than any city I've ever lived in. Most of the people in LA do live up to the stereotype of being very fake. It's a city where everyone just wants to social climb one another to get themselves to the next best place, not sincere and has very little depth. And I'm not saying every single person in LA is like that because I have wonderful, amazing friends there who I love so, so much. But I would say a majority of the population of LA is like that. And when I decided to move from LA, all my friends kept telling me, you know, there's people like that in other cities too, Stephanie. Of course there are, but the percentage of people like that in LA to any other city is insane and I feel like to survive in LA you need to have a filter to know when people are fake and when people are sincere and when they're not and you know I've come to accept I don't have that filter. Have I had my fair share of moments where people weren't nice to me directly? Of course but the biggest thing that really made me turned off from LA was just seeing how people treated other people. I've never seen so many people talk so poorly about the people they hang out with the most. And if these are the people they hang out with the most, then like, how do they treat people they hate? There's also a lot of expectations to look a specific way in LA. And I still am not entirely sure what that look is, but I guess the best way I could explain it is, I was walking around New York City, where I live now, with a friend of mine, and he made a comment about this woman, maybe like her 70s, who had purple and blue hair and how she was just killing it. And that is not something you would ever seen LA. Everyone needs to look very polished and have a full face of makeup or you are judged. And it's weird. I've never seen strangers take so much time to just give really weird looks to other strangers. Another big thing is I moved to LA because of YouTube. So I know a lot of people in LA who are in the same field of work as me, which is YouTube. And I'm not talking about anyone directly, so please don't make assumptions, but I wish you could see what goes on outside of YouTube. Although some people are very genuine, and very authentic and I know many creators that are unbelievable people there's a lot that are not and it really hurts me to say that because I thought a lot really were great and but then again I also didn't have that filter and a lot of them lie a lot of them only care about their channel or growing and some don't even care about having fans they just care about money and speak poorly about their fans and I'm just like you know you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. And it's just, I already have been having a hard time with YouTube this year because of the restrictions implemented on LGBTQ plus content. And then just having all of my social circles be people within YouTube, it just, it, it, it didn't feel right for me. Especially seeing the way people would treat each other and then the lies that they'll tell online in order to get views or to make a video that they normally would never ever do 
or anything related to it in their real lives unless they know there's views involved or money involved or just some type of incentive involved. I've also never experienced friend groups that talk so negatively about other people in their friend group. Like these are supposed to be your best friends. These are supposed to be people that you can lean on, but honestly, oh my goodness. Another thing that's really important to me where I live is having a really great and positive LGBTQ plus community. And, and though I do have amazing peers in the LGBTQ plus community in LA, and I have many good times and moments and gems that I can point out, overall, I just don't really love the scene in LA because it is very, very binary. It's very judgmental. It's very, you're either butch or you're femme. You're either completely transgender to the opposite gender spectrum or you are cisgender. There's no fluidity with anything. There's no fluidity with your sexuality, your gender expression, your gender, whether you're feminine, whether you're masculine, it's you're one or the other. And I've never been categorized so much as you know, being that femme. And am I a feminine person? Yeah, do I embrace it? Yeah, but I've never had it said to me in such a derogative and negative way than in LA. There's so much you need to be butch enough, you need to be femme enough, you need to be this enough. And if you are not either black or white, there's no room for gray and you're an outcast. Another thing that confused me about LA is I assumed only social media people would be the ones that would try and use someone else for their social media, right? Makes sense? No, people will lie up the wazoo in LA, which blows my mind because if you're not on social media, What's the point? Like, what do you gain? But people do. I don't know why. Just, I feel like it's an LA thing where even if you are an accountant, you're going to want someone with a following to help up your following. And I don't get it. I don't get why people are so obsessed with social media because honestly, like the world's always changing. Like this is gonna be completely irrelevant in God knows how long. Being social media famous is like being monopoly rich. It really means nothing. But there's just so many women and especially lesbians that have that too cool for school attitude and just care about being Instagram famous. I've had people not even give me the time of day at a bar or club and then when they find out how many followers I have, suddenly it's bam, interest. Like I'm not stupid. Maybe, well, I was when I moved to LA, but I've learned a lot since then. I feel like LA has a reputation for everyone's nice and relaxed and chill. But the thing is, it's not that everyone's nice, it's that everyone is fake. And honestly, I'd rather know someone doesn't like me than pretend to like me, have me invest emotionally in that person, and then find out they only had negative intentions. Like, I once had a girl that I went on dates with who told me she knew nothing about social media, knew nothing about YouTube, and I was like, this is great, this is awesome. I introduced her to a bunch of lesbian YouTubers, and then she stopped talking to me because I didn't have sexual relations with her after a couple dates. And then I got a call from a friend saying that she has been following all of the lesbian YouTubers for years and showed me screenshots and all this proof for it. I'm just like, wow, why do people just do that? Also the scene in terms of nonprofit work and activism, I really was not crazy about in LA. Before I moved to LA when I was in Orlando, I was doing a lot of work with an LGBTQ plus homeless youth shelter and a lot of hands-on work and that's the type of volunteering I like to do. And there isn't as much of that in LA. There are a bunch of things I have done in LA. I have worked with like youth groups there and volunteered and stuff like that that I don't talk about much online because I don't do it to talk about it online. In LA, most people won't do something to help another person unless it's documented unless they get to post about it, unless someone knows about it. And because of that, there aren't many things that are done. LA is a sunny place for shady people. It's always gonna be a place that has spawned to me. I've learned so much there, I grew so much there. I found amazing people out there who I love more than anything else in the world and who will be at my wedding one day if I ever get married. It's just not my place. And especially with the YouTube thing, you do not have to live in LA to do YouTube because do you know how many YouTubers just sit at home alone? Like, I don't know what the LA thing is. They don't even really collab much. Yeah, maybe you'll collab sometimes. I've collabed sometimes, but for the most part, you really don't need to live in LA. I also used to love driving before LA. I would always volunteer to be the driver on a road trip. I would always be the DD. 
but LA has made me hate driving. If someone lives more than three miles away from you in LA, you will never see them. This video isn't meant to be a rant on why LA is terrible and why no one should live in LA. It's just why I didn't feel like it was a fit for me. There are some people who I know thrive in LA and I could not imagine them being happier anywhere else, but it didn't bring me happiness, so I decided to change it. I had people there that made me happy. I have amazing friends there, but I want to live in a place where the place itself makes me happy, where the energy of the city makes me happy, where I can walk around and feel like I belong here, and I never got that in LA. I'm sure you all also have plenty of questions as what's going on in New York, what my new place is going to look like, how my move is, and I actually do have a video on my move that'll be coming out soon. I just wanted to separately address this. LA was a great chapter in my life. I learned a lot there. I loved a lot there. But you can live somewhere and experience a place and be thankful for a place without that place being home. You know, sometimes it's better to go and live somewhere that you thrive rather than where the thrive is. And I wouldn't have learned that if I didn't move to LA. I also learned to be so much more thankful for authentic people. I learned to know when people are being fake, so don't even frickin' try me. I'm really excited for this next chapter, and I hope you are too. Links for my Twitter, my Tumblr, all that fun stuff will be in the description, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.